Council of Florence taught that those who practice the old law and the Jewish religion are sinning mortally and are, quote, alien to the Christian faith and not in the least fit to participate in eternal salvation unless someday they recover from these errors. In 2001, however, the Pontifical Biblical Commission released a book entitled, quote, The Jewish People and Their Sacred Scriptures in the Christian Bible. This book rejects the dogma that the Old Covenant has ceased. It teaches that the Old Covenant is still valid. Our Lord specifically tells the Jews that what is written in the Old Testament concerning Him will convict them. John chapter 5 verses 39, 45 through 47, quote, Search the scriptures, for you think in them to have life everlasting, and the same are they that give testimony of me. There is one that accuseth you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you did believe Moses, you would perhaps believe me also, for he wrote of me. Pope Eugene IV, Council of Florence, Cantate Damo, 1441, ex cathedra, quote, the Holy Roman Church firmly believes, professes, and preaches that all those who are outside the Catholic Church, not only pagans, but also Jews, or heretics, and schismatics, cannot share an eternal life, and will go into the everlasting fire which was prepared for the devil and his angels, unless they are joined to the Church before the end of their lives. Pope Pius IX, Vatican Council I, ex cathedra, quote, all the faithful of Christ must believe that the apostolic see and the Roman pontiff hold primacy over the whole world. This is the doctrine of Catholic truth, from which no one can deviate and keep his faith in salvation. Pope Boniface VIII, Unum Sanctum, November 18, 1302, ex cathedra, quote, We declare, say, define and proclaim to every human creature that they, by absolute necessity for salvation, are entirely subject to the Roman pontiff. Pope St. Gregory the Great, quote, The Holy Universal Church teaches that it is not possible to worship God truly except in her and asserts that all who are outside of her will not be saved. 1 Corinthians 10.20, quote, The things which the heathen sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. Pope Gregory the 16th, August 15, 1832, quote, They should consider the testimony of Christ himself that those who are not with Christ are against him, and that they disperse unhappily who do not gather with him. Therefore, without a doubt, they will perish forever unless they hold the Catholic faith whole and inviolate. Pope Leo XII, May 5, 1824, quote, By divine faith we hold one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The problem of tradition as it exists in the Church, the Church is tradition, into which, let us admit, much human pseudo-tradition has found its way, so much so, in fact, that even and even precisely, the Church has contributed to the general crisis of tradition that afflicts mankind. The counter-syllabus gave way to a new cry that was far more intense. Pope Paul IV teaches that a heretic cannot be a validly elected pope, even if the election took place with the unanimous consent of all the cardinals. Pope Paul IV, Cum Ex Apostolatus Officio, February 15, 1559, quote, By this our Constitution, which is to remain valid in perpetuity, we enact, determine, decree, and define, that if ever at any time it shall appear that the Roman Pontiff, prior to his promotion or elevation as Cardinal or Roman Pontiff, has deviated from the Catholic faith or fallen into some heresy, the promotion or elevation, even if it shall have been uncontested and by the unanimous assent of all the cardinals, shall be null, void, and worthless. It shall not be held as partially legitimate in any way. Those thus promoted or elevated shall be deprived automatically and without need of any further declaration of all dignity, position, honor, title, authority, office, and power. No one at all, therefore, may infringe this document. If anyone, however, should presume to attempt this, let him know that he is destined to incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul. St. Robert Bellarmine, quote, A pope who is a manifest heretic automatically ceases to be pope and head, just as he ceases automatically to be a Christian and a member of the church, wherefore he can be judged and punished by the church. This is the teaching of all the ancient fathers, 
who teach that manifest heretics immediately lose all jurisdiction. St. Francis de Sales, Doctor of the Church, quote, Now when he, the Pope, is explicitly a heretic, he falls ipso facto from his dignity and out of the Church. St. Antoninus, 1459, quote, In the case in which the Pope would become a heretic, he would find himself by that fact alone, and without any other sentence, separated from the Church. A Pope who would be separated from the Church by heresy, therefore, would by that very fact itself cease to be head of the Church. He could not be a heretic and remain Pope, because since he is outside of the Church, he cannot possess the keys of the Church. July 26, 1755. First, the missionary who is attempting with God's help to bring back Greek and Eastern schismatics to unity should devote all his effort to the single objective of delivering them from doctrines at variance with the Catholic faith. Pope Benedict XIV, for the only work entrusted to the missionary is that of recalling the Oriental to the Catholic faith. The United Nations is Paul VI address February 5, 1972. We have faith in the UN. Paul VI message April 26, 1968. May all men of heart join together peacefully in order that the principles of the United Nations may be not only proclaimed, but put into effect, and that not only the constitutions of states may promulgate them, but public authorities apply them. Paul VI removed the index of forbidden books. Paul VI homily, June 29, 1972. Satan's smoke has made its way into the temple of God through some crack. St. Athanasius, even if Catholics faithful to tradition were reduced to a handful, they would be the true church. What happened in the papal conclaves of 1958 and 1963, from which John XXIII and Paul VI emerged, claiming to be the elected popes, we showed that other cardinals were lawfully elected Pope before John XXIII and Paul VI were elected. Evidence has been admitted by a cardinal who participated in the conclaves, a prominent Vatican insider, newspaper reports, and former intelligence agents. An anti-Pope is an uncanonically elected, quote, Pope, that is a person claiming to be Pope who has not been legally elected. St. Robert Bellarmine. For men are not bound or able to read hearts, but when they see that someone is a heretic by his external works, they judge him to be a heretic pure and simple, and condemn him as a heretic. Pope St. Celestine I, Council of Ephesus 431, Chapter 8. Pray that the faith may be granted to infidels, that idolaters may be delivered from the errors of their impiety, that the light of truth may be visible to the Jews, and the veil of their hearts may be removed, that heretics may come to their senses through a comprehension of the Catholic faith, that schismatics may receive the spirit of renewed charity. During the prayer meeting, the representative of every religion involved was allowed to come to the pulpit and give a sermon on world peace. In the presence, a voodoo high priest came to the pulpit outside the Basilica of St. Francis. This would involve slitting the throats of goats, chickens, doves, and pigeons, and draining their blood from their arteries. Pope St. Damasus I, Council of Rome, 382, Canon 15. If anyone does not say that he, Jesus Christ, will come to judge the living and the dead, he is a heretic. Pope Leo XII, Ubi Primum, number 14, May 5, 1824. It is impossible for the most true God, who is truth itself, the best, the wisest provider, and the rewarder of good men, to approve all sects who profess false teachings, which are often inconsistent with one another and contradictory, and to confer eternal rewards on their members. By divine faith we hold one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Pope St. Leo the Great, Sermon 129. Wherefore, since outside the Catholic Church there is nothing perfect, nothing undefiled, we are in no way likened with those who are divided from the unity of the body of Christ. We are joined in no communion. Pope Pius VI condemned the idea that the Church could ever issue a discipline which is, quote, dangerous and harmful. Pope Pius IX, Vatican Council I, ex-Cathedra. 
So this gift of truth and a never failing faith was divinely conferred upon Peter and his successors in this chair. In October 2002, Pope John Paul II added five new mysteries to the Rosary, called the Mysteries of Light. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach a gospel to you, besides that which we have preached to you, let him be anathema. Pope Pius X, E. Supremi Apostolatus, October 4, 1903, The distinguishing mark of Antichrist, Man has with infinite temerity put himself in the place of God. St. Francis de Sales, Doctor of the Church. It would indeed be one of the strangest monsters that could be seen if the head of the church were not of the church. Pope Leo XIII, January 22, 1899. Where Peter is, there is the church. Pope Pius X, Encyclical, May 26, 1910. The church remains immutable and constant as the pillar and foundation of truth in professing one identical doctrine. The truth is that when there is a true pope, he is the center of unity in the church. However, it is also true that the church can be without a true pope for a long period of time. This period of time when the chair of Peter is vacant occurs every time a pope dies and has lasted for as long as three and a half years in church history. This period of time when the church is without a pope is called a papal interregnum, which according to theologians such as the 19th century Father Edmund O'Reilly, could easily last longer than 35 years. Thus, there is nothing incompatible with the promises of Christ to his church for him to leave the church without a pope for decades through the worst part of the great apostasy. St. Athanasius, even if the true church of Christ were reduced to a handful of true believers and one true priest, they would remain the true church of Christ on earth. Pope Vigilius, Second Council of Constantinople, 553. We bear in mind what was promised about the holy church and him who said, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. By these we understand the death-dealing tongues of heretics.